Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's your man Jay, and today we're going to do a 10 day review for the Pixel 3a XL. Let's get into it. So, the first thing I want to start with is the design and hardware of this phone. Um, the Pixel 3a XL is on the larger side and it has a six inch display. Uh, it's got some um, hefty top and bottom bezels that balance the phone out. That's not a bad thing. I don't mind having some bezels sometimes when you want to hold the phone in this orientation to play a game or whatever you're doing, taking a photo, it's perfectly fine. But the phone is made of plastic and they say polycarbonate. Well, it's plastic. And it doesn't feel any less premium than my current Pixel 3. Uh, and, and I compare those phones because they have the same design. Uh, but one is plastic and one is glass. So I really can't tell the difference in the two. Uh, but what I will tell you is that this phone is definitely built very well and we know that pa plastic can crack uh, But plastic will scratch quicker than it'll crack than it'll crack So if you drop this you should be okay depending on how, what angle it hits your phone definitely will have, have some scuffs on it Probably but the design and hardware of this thing is actually really nice I mean, I'm ready for a change from Google, but for what this is for this price point. It's actually pretty premium now the screen on this device, like I said before, is six inches and watching videos and content on it, I think you're probably gonna be happy with it. Um, it is an OLED display, so the blacks should be really black for you. The colors should be really punchy. Uh, it's not HDR certified, but when you play an HDR video, you will get the just of you know how crisp and clear the screen can be. And imagine if it was HDR, but the screen is big, beautiful, vibrant, uh, and it is absolutely on point, man. You should be very pleased with this screen right here. Now, performance is something that I ragged on this phone before having it with the Snapdragon 670, and uh, I'm taken back by that. It just proves that you don't actually need a Snapdragon 855 or 845, 835. You don't need these higher 800 series processors to actually have fantastic and stellar performance. Um, I've had this probably a little bit more than 10 days, but this is kind of an official 10 day review. No hiccups with this phone whatsoever. I mean, I've compared it next to the Pixel, which has a Snapdragon 845, and it performed the same. Uh, it pretty much opened up the applications almost right on cue with the Pixel 3. And that's saying something. Now, day-to-day -day use, this actually is a little bit more efficient than the A845 because I'm getting stellar battery, and I'll get into that later. Um, but the performance on this thing, it's top-notch, man. I mean, you can call it a mid-range if you want to, but stick around, and I'll tell you what I think this phone is. So performance, optimization is key. Now, battery life is something that a lot of people want to know about this phone. At this point, I'm getting well over 24 hours, like a full 24 hours, not a work day. I'm getting well over that and into seven hours of screen on time or more. This is really fantastic battery, folks. And again, it goes back to that processor being really battery efficient to push this 1080p display. And it does have a pretty large battery inside of it, well over 3000. So this is um, something that is really helping the phone in a sense, coupled with that processor, it's really doing its justice. And if you keep a dark or wallpaper on there, you'll really see um, the, the, the savings of the battery where it sips in standby mode. So I think you'll be pretty happy with the battery life on this thing. And I consider myself kind of a heavy user only because I get so many notifications that it's unreal. Like my emails are always popping off. Social media, is, it, I, I don't leave all those things synced. Now remember, battery life is always determined by the user. We're all gonna have different apps. We're all gonna play different games. We're all gonna have the screen brightness different. That's a question that I have to answer though. Somebody always, people always ask me, where do you have your screen brightness at? And I keep my screen brightness at auto. Now, one of the highest selling points, if not the main selling point of this phone, is these cameras. These are the same cameras in the Pixel 3, I keep pointing down, in the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 3 XL. These are the same cameras, folks. I've heard people say, oh, it has a different chip, it's got this program differently. Fact is, these are top notch cameras. Now, I used to say that these aren't, they're not the best for video recording. When in fact, I probably could use these to record videos, uh, like full time on the channel, I could do it. With some tweaks and adjustments, I probably will record a lot in 4K because of the crop, because 1080p at 60 frames per second is my favorite to shoot at, uh, or 4K at 60 frames per second, but shooting at 1080p at 60 frames per second on this phone, it's really close. Uh, and so you lose uh, field of view, uh, but Overall, the quality is not bad, folks. I've compared this phone's video cameras 
easily I've done five different phones. And the phone comes out on top in some way or another. But where the phone does the best, even over all the flagships that are out there, is still shots. So let's take a second and let's look at some portrait photos. And I don't do selfies. Um, I just regularly don't do selfies. But I really have been enjoying how portrait, and if you guys know me, you know, I, I pretty much only take portrait shots with Pixel phones because it gives you both photos. So I can choose the portrait shot or the regular shot. And I really like that. It saves time instead of taking a portrait and, a, you know. So let's take a second and let's look at some photos here of the Pixel 3 XL shooting with portrait and just regular, all, just some photos that I've taken. I think you'll be impressed. Now, let's talk about price. Look for promos, because there's some promos somewhere. But, what I will tell you is, this one right here can be had for $4.79. The smaller version, with the 5.6 inch display, same phone, just a few different tweaks that are different. It's smaller, you get a little bit smaller battery, things like that, but it still has everything. Headphone jack, um, which, is, which is key nowadays, because we all have these very expensive uh, earbuds and headphones that we want to use. Uh, there's no high-powered DAC or anything in here, uh, but it has a headphone jack. So just use some high-quality earbuds and you'll be okay. Uh, but it does have, it doesn't have an IP rating, it doesn't have wireless charging, it doesn't have any of those things. I don't require wireless charging, I don't require um, uh, the uh, IP rating, I don't require all those things. So if a phone has that though, it's a bonus to me. But what this phone does offer is flagship territory phone at an affordable price. This phone coming in at starting at $399 has set the mark for the industry to let people know you don't have to spend a ton of money to get flagship performance and, and have that flagship price. Now OnePlus used to be labeled the flagship killer. In my opinion, this phone right here and the 3A are the new flagship killers. Reason being is because they're doing everything that flagships can do better at a lower cost. Now, some of you guys are going to say, OJ, oh, you probably can get a, a previous year's flagship, or, and you can actually get the Xiaomi Mi uh, 9, which has the Snapdragon 855. It's got all the latest bells and whistles, but will it pe perform like this, and will it have these cameras? I don't know. But still shots key, optimization key, battery key, price key. It's, this is somewhat of a complete package. If I didn't love my LG G8 so much, I would actually use the smaller version of this as a full-time daily driver. I really would. Google has set the mark, and I, like I said in another video, they pretty much learned what they did wrong with the Pixel 3 and got it right with the 3A series. To me, in my humble opinion, after using this for you know 10 days or more, this is actually a flagship killer because it's coming at a lower price point starting at $399 and it's outperforming the flagships that I have. And you're going to say, well, Jay, the benchmarks don't say so. If you look past the benchmarks and forget about all that techie stuff and just use the phone, I guarantee you, you'll be impressed. I guarantee it. So it's your man, Jay. This is um, 10 days. We'll call it 10 days with the new flagship killer. I'm out. Take care.